All right, Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Now, this psalm is 50 verses. We're not covering the whole thing tonight. We're going to go through verse 15 tonight, and then uh, next Wednesday we'll continue verse 16 through 50, and we'll, we're going to divide it up that way because there's, there's actually a division between uh, verses 15 and verse 16. Uh, and so verse 16, actually, David tells you how God delivered him. And so uh, we'll, we'll do verses 1 through 15 tonight. Once you find your place there, I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. This is uh, verse 1. I want you to look at the very first verse. It's very short. It says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is uh, worthy to be praised. He is worthy, right? Who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death collapsed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death pre uh, prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord. And cried unto my God, he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, and found, uh, trembled. the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken uh, because of his wrath. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of the, his mouth. Devoured coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind and made darkness his, uh, his secret place. The, his pavilion round about him were darkness and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest, ga the highest gave his voice, uh, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discom uh, discomforted, discomforted them. Then the, uh, the channels of waters were seen, and the fountains of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. And so, let's pray. Father, as we are to the teaching and preaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, tonight as we study these 15 verses that you would help us, Lord, that we would get something out of it, Lord, uh, that we can apply to our life, Lord, and uh, we'll be sure to give you honor and glory for it. Lord, may the Holy Spirit work in the hearts and the lives of those that are here. Lord, I ask you to do these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. David praises God for his deliverance, part one. David praises God for his deliverance. This is part one. Next week will be part two, uh, uh, talking about this. Uh, that first, ver is, this is a, of course, if you have in your Bible, some of you will have in your written above that psalm, uh, it says, to the chief magician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord who spake unto the Lord. The words of this song, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, so this is a psalm or a prayer that David prayed uh, to God when he was delivered from Saul and 
those that were after him. And so uh, we can take this psalm. Of course, we're seeing the heart of David in these psalms. And we should be able to see uh, his conversation. And and I've asked this before. uh, As we study these psalms, is there any uh, like language that you use? Now, I'm not asking if you pray in old Elizabeth in English, the way the King James is written. But what I'm saying is the passion is there uh, in your prayer life that David has. The, what I mean by the language, are you, do you speak to God uh, with that passion that David does? And as, as we see in verse 1, as, as he's, he says, I will love thee. Do you tell God, do you tell God, do you tell him that you love him? Do you say, I love you, Lord, like you tell your spouse or like you tell your children that you love them? And listen, David says, I will love thee. I, I will love you. He, he loves the Lord. And so, and number one, David loves the Lord. He, he, he says he will, he will love the Lord. Listen, God deserves our love. He does. I mean, he formed us in the womb, and he told Jeremiah before, you know, in the womb I formed you. I knew you before you came out. I mean, he formed us uh, in the womb, and he deserves our love. I mean, he did everything that was necessary for us to be saved, right? And so he deserves our love. He says, and he also says, oh, Lord, my strength. David knows where the source of his strength comes from. Now, I'm not, you know, David, uh, we're not talking about physical strength, uh, you know, like Samson, but no, David had some spiritual strength. David is a spiritual giant, right? But listen, even though he's a spiritual giant, he still dealt with sin just like you and I do. But David knows the source of his strength. Why David was able to go out and take that lamb out of the lion's mouth and why he was grabbing by the beard when he could go out and sling that slingshot against Goliath and had five extra stones in his pocket for his brothers, right? David knew where he, the source of his strength came from. It wasn't in himself. Because he says, I will, I have, uh, he, he says, I can, verse 2, the Lord is my what? Rock. So we listen. David loved the Lord. He knew where the, his strength came from. See, he he, he praises. He he lists in verse two seven things. He praises the Lord in several uh, seven different truths. Look at verse two. He says, "The Lord is my rock." When you think of a rock, what do you think of? When Jesus says, "Build your land, on, build your house on what? On the rock, right?" When we, when we mention rock, we should, what co- should come to mind is stability, right? Stability. So David, he, he says, the Lord is my rock. Listen, uh, uh, David is stable. He says, the Lord stabilizes me. He is where I get my stability. Uh, David doesn't go with the wind, right? Uh, as the Apostle Paul says, they go with every wind of doctrine. David, listen... Uh, God is his stability. Listen, we should be, ha- should be able to be stable with God. Our faith should be stable. It shouldn't be the roller coaster up and down, up and down, right? I uh, said, so we're going to have those going up in those mountains and in those valleys, but our faith should stay the same. It should stay on that plane just continuing to go forward or moving uh, higher and higher uh, as our faith matures uh, in the gospel. So, uh, listen, Dave, his faith is stable. He says, look at this, uh, and my fortress. The Lord is his fortress. What does that mean? What do you mean he's my fortress? Well, he is secure. He, he knows that the Lord is, will protect him. He's my fortress. I'm secure. You know, back in the day, when I was growing, when I was a kid, and most of y'all in here, when you were a kid, did we ever lock the door when we left home? 
I remember going to school. Now, our front door stayed locked, but the back door, it was always wide open. It was always unlocked. You know, the only time we ever locked the door was at night. And some of you, when you are kids, you probably didn't even lock it then because you didn't have any issues. Well, you know, we think about a house, our, uh, the fortress where we're, we feel secure, right? Well, the, well, David felt secure with the Lord. He, he, his faith was secure. And the third one we see is, and my deliverer. David knew that God could deliver him. Same with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? They all live forever, but, but listen, you, you, if you put us in there, we know our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, they said we're not going to bow, right? So listen, God can deliver you and I out of anything. I have seen God deliver me out of some pretty sticky situations that I caused myself, right? Lord, I need you to, I need you to step in, Lord. I admit, I was stupid. I'm not behind the pulpit, so I can say that word. I, I was dumb, Lord. I, I made a mistake. I said something. I done something. Lord, I need you to step up and take care of this because I can't. And I have seen God take. How many of you have seen God take care of you when you're in a financial crisis? I've seen God do it. I've seen God to being able to deliver. I mean, there are untold missionary stories of missionaries how God has delivered them. I mean, missionaries uh, uh, driving down the road and they had a wreck, and uh, in the middle of that wreck, uh, some preacher called him and said. I just, you know, how you doing? And he said he was all right. And he goes, well, I just want to let you know, I just prayed for you. And he goes, well, brother, I was just in a wreck. You know, I mean, God can deliver. And David here, he's praying and he's praising God uh, for delivering him from the hand of Saul and, and, the, and his enemies. So listen, don't think that God can't deliver you from whatever it is you're going through. He is able. If David can save his life, physical threat, then I think he can take care of whatever you and I have to go through. So, you know, he knows that God can deliver him. That's the third one. Look at the, the fourth one. The, uh, he is my, uh, uh, my God and my strength. He, he, he's praising him. You are my God and my strength. As we saw in verse 1, David knew where his strength is. Uh, and then the, the, fifth, uh, the fifth one, uh, the, uh, the buckler, he, he, he says, My God, my strength, in whom I, I will trust, my buckler. My buckler. That speaks of protection. That's what a buckler is. Uh, it speaks of protection. Again, I have seen God protect me. I'm sure those of you have seen God protect you. I mean, we get sometimes we get mad because somebody pulls out in front of us or and or they pull out halfway in the street and they keep you from being able to turn left and go down the road and you see that there's a wreck. Could have been us. We always speak of that. Protecting us. The Lord is my the horn of my salvation. Listen, David, he, he knows that God has the power to save him. And then lastly, my, the Lord, my, he's my high tower. We don't think about a high tower anymore. You know, having a high tower is not really necessary anymore. We have radar and different uh, instruments to be able to take that place. But back in the day, they would have them high towers, one, to look for enemies that are coming, right? Uh, in the castle or on the on the wall that protected the city, they'd be high up there so they could see out, and uh, also that they could, uh, you know, uh, early, you know, in the 50s and 60s, but before the technology that we have so prevalent today, they would have people out on watch looking for wildfires. 
preacher sat out there and read a dose so that uh, they would have a guy out there in a high tower to look for fires. You know, and so uh, David here, he says, you are my high tower. Right? He, he, he goes, uh, he knows who's watching over him. He said, God, you are watching over me. He acknowledges, Lord, you, you, you know, you're watching, you're over everything. You're watching over me. So he's praising him for the deliverance. And, I mean, these are wonderful things that we could praise him for also in our own life. Uh, and so uh, we see that he praises him with those seven different things in verse number two. Verse number three, he, ha- he, 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 he look at David's resolve to pray. Listen, just because he was, he, you know, I, we, we, we saw where David had prayed for before while he was being chased. Now that he's rescued, he doesn't stop praying. He has resolved to continue. Listen, when God does something for us, either delivers us or sees us through something, we don't just stop and say, okay, that's it. That's all I need. And then we'll hit 911 again when there's another crisis. No, David has resolved to continue to pray. Uh, look at verse uh, 3. He goes, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He goes, I will continue to call unto the Lord. Listen, folks, uh, it is so easy to, it's so easy to pray that we just neglect it so much. And so uh, d- d- he, he will continue to go to the Lord, and he, he, he has resolved. Why, in verse, he, he says, oh, so shall I be saved from my enemies. He has resolved to continue to go to the Lord do you and I have resolved or do we just do the 911 when we need him that's not a very good relationship is it it's not a good relationship with our Savior just for the 911s Sometimes we act like we're teenagers. We only call when we need, right? It's not a, that's not good. Fourthly, David reveals his predicament. Look at verse 4 and 5. The sorrows of death com- uh, compassed me. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me. Passed me about the snares of death, prevented me. He, he he reveals what predicament he was in. Now Saul was chasing him, right? He was Saul and his army was after David. He's like, Lord, you. They were after me. He was in despair. Verse six, he says, and in my distress, I called upon the Lord. Listen, when we're in, when we're in distress. Yes, we should be calling upon the law, upon the Lord outside of being distressed, but when we're distressed, we should be able to call upon him. You know, when things happen, our, 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 our first thing that we do, our reaction is to react. I need to do this, right? And as men, we, we, our first reaction is, I got to fix this. I got to take care of this now, Right? Well, David, he, he, he says, I was in a predicament. Uh, Saul was chasing me. I was in, uh, in my distress. I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even unto his ears. Listen, he says, I, I was in this predicament. I was, uh, you know, being chased, and I called upon him, and he heard my voice. Of course, God's going to hear our voice, right? And so David acknowledges, you, you, you heard my cry. Now this is where I want to spend some time in verse number 7 through 15. David describes the weapons that God used to help deliver him. There are several things here that David mentions. And these are, listen, these are things that God uses on this earth. There's several things mentioned. 
In verse 7 it says, And the earth shook and trembled the foundation also, and the hills moved and were shaken because of his wrath. <coughs> you know, God has used earthquakes in the past to judge. Korah? They were swallowed up because they were causing trouble in the camp? I know we call them natural disasters, right? Because of nature. Well, who controls nature? God does, right? Listen, we can't see the wind. All we see is the, the effects of the wind, right? It says that God rode the wind. God uses all these things on earth to judge mankind. And David here mentions 7 through 15, the weapons that God used to get him away from Saul, to save him from Saul. God will use, listen, God will use those to judge. I, I believe God uses those all the time with, in judging his, his people. I know what we say, well, all these California fires or mismanagement uh, of, fi of force, that, 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 that could be, that very well could be, but I'm sure God used that mismanagement to set some fires, to allow that lightning strike to hit or whatever it was to, call, to cause judgment. Hurricanes, the tempest. God uses these natural, what we call natural disasters, God controls those things. I, I have talked to people who saw a tornado hit every house in their neighborhood and miss theirs. God controls nature. Anybody see those pictures that NASA has put out the last two days from sending that thing out, seeing how far out in space? It's crazy what God has created and what listen it's so vast he controls it all the, his spirit flows in, and, and creates those things and he controls it all and if god can control space and keep from asteroids and things in the sun is in that one spot to keep us from burning up and controlling all those stars surely surely he's trustworthy David knew it, so he praises him for it. Praises God for delivering him from Saul, keeping, you know, saving his life. There's a meme floating around on Facebook, and it's a picture of a guy. He says, you know, the face I make when I give God the things that I'm struggling with. And below it's another, it's another picture of the same guy looking around the corner. Me looking at God. You done yet? But, but that, that's how we are. Uh, we laugh. It's a meme. You know, talking about our, uh, our, our faith, how we ought to have more faith. But that's how we are. We say we give things over to God. Then we're like, how you doing over there, Lord, with that? We want, it's almost like we need to keep that eye on him. Folks, if he can control everything and feed the birds that don't go out and plant and reap, right? If he can, if he can control the birds, if he, if he can control the showers and the flowers and make everything that he has, surely we can trust him. Surely He's praiseworthy. God is good. He is too good to us. Listen, I, I, I know our country's in chaos. I hear, I, I, I can't, I mean, the religion of the day, politics, listen, we're not supposed to talk about it at work, but listen, it's always at work. I know our country's a mess. I know our government's a mess. But the good news is, it's all about to come to an end. Because we're out. Right? We're to look forward to that. 
We look without, we're going to be di distressed, right? We can't go out there. We can't, listen, we can't live this Christian life looking at, at, at the uh, outward of our faith. Uh, we can't look at how everything is it affecting us and be okay. We're supposed to be focused on the author of our faith. Not the quality of our faith. Well, you know, but Mark, uh, I know that. I, I know I'm supposed to trust the Lord, but, you know, it sure is hard. I know. I know it is. But if God can see David through, he can see us through. Well, Brother Mark, well, hey, you got time. He didn't have to pay $4 a gallon for gas and also pay his bills. No, he was on a run for his life. I think he had a little bit more stress than you and I did do right now. You don't have anybody who is already who, if they meet you, you're they're taking your head off. Anybody in here have that? Somebody who's after you want to take your head off besides Brother Roy? No. Now I'm not trying to demean or say what you're struggling with is not important. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if David or what he was going through, running for his life, trusting in God, you and I can do the same. And he's worthy to be praised for it. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. It's a good practice to get into. To being, not just be thankful for what he's done, but to praise him for what he's done. What do you mean? I need to go out and sing these hymns? No, it's not what I'm talking about. You can go out and sing hymns and songs. That's all great. That's part of your praise to him. But praising him for being him. Praising God because he's God. He's worthy of it. Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, as we see what David, how he praised you and the things that you used to deliver him from Saul and those ungodly men, Lord, and how he can trust you and how you delivered him, how, you, how he loves you and describes his faith in you. Lord, what a great example we have in this psalm. Lord, to praise you, to worship you, to trust you. Lord, you are trustworthy. You are so good to us. You are my rock. Lord, you are my strength. I will love you. Or may you have your will in your way. In the invitation, I ask you to do these things in Christ's name. Amen.